We've flushed our transducer. We do that off the table. Most people do. Now you're going to take and you're going to pass that off to me. Okay. And so you can just kind of drop. Oh. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> then if you're the circulator, you're over here. You're going to put it in the holder. And then you're going to take and connect that to the cable that comes out of the box for this transducer. Now there's other things that we're gonna to have to learn about, like this needs to be at mid chest level for every patient, blah, blah, blah. There's other stuff that we need to understand with the transducer, but now we're just talking about mechanics of how we do this. All right, next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get your flush line and the rubber band's already off. As I said, when you get it in the real world, and you know what, that's got some fluid in it, so let me just take that cap off for me for a second gonna suck that fluid out because they left. Obviously, normally there's air in it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe I want to put that cap back on. I think we're good with this one. That one looks like okay. That one's okay. All right, so we're just gonna leave that kind of like that. Okay, so the flush is closer to the patient's head. So I just make this a rule for myself, just to help the circulator, so they don't have to come up here and say. Which is which? If you pass both of those lines off, they can get tangled down here. And so then I'm like, okay, which one's flush? Which one's contrast? So if you'll do what I call split the pole, you'll put your flush on this side of the pole and you'll put your contrast on this side of the pole because that's how it's going to be hanging anyway. Okay. So you're going to take and just kind of toss it off. Good. Okay. And then Go ahead and take that rubber band off. Try not to break it if you can, so we can save it. Good. Normally it'd be paper, you just tear it. You're gonna do the same thing with that one. You're just gonna pass it off. Good. So then I'm gonna come in with my heparin I saline flush bag that we either have a brand new one of or we saved some from the flush that we passed off over there. And so as the circulator, I'm going to just take off the cap, make sure that I keep that sterile it in and hang it up. Uh oh, that one's broken and that might be why we didn't use that one. Um, make a quick hole. That'll work. I think. Ooh, you wouldn't have to do this in the real world. Okay. All right. And but here we want to make sure we save these caps because we do have to reuse everything. All right, here's our contrast. It would be a full bottle. This actually, would you fill this? Put some more. Not completely full. Leave me about that much, Amari. About that much. good thank you all right so we're pretending we just got this out of the you know container or wherever we store our flush pop the lid off do the same thing this was what I was talking about on the video this is rubber so you don't want to go in in a shearing motion because you could shear off some of that rubber and then it could be a particulate that you could actually pull up and inject into the patient mm -hmm. so you do want to go these these are going to be easier because we've used them the brand new ones, it's going to just take a little bit of force, but you're just going to shove straight in. And then we're going to hang it. Okay. So now, what you can do, and I'm going to say, go ahead and take off that large syringe and put all that flush back into your bowl. Now, usually when I'm flushing, like it takes more. I sucked some flush out of the tubing, that's why we had a little bit more. But when I'm flushing my transducer, I usually don't end up but with about that much left. You don't want to have too much because now what you're doing is you're using that syringe to draw down to fill these tubes okay so you can go ahead and get rid of that flush like i just had her do okay good so first one we want to do is our flush line okay so you're going to open your flush yep and you're going to start drawing down you want to kind of keep yep because air is going to rise and you can just start pulling down same thing as with the transducer so you're going to possibly get bubbles stuck right here. So I do like to have my hemostat and whack it as I'm pulling down. Okay. 
Yep, good. Hit in this area. And actually we have a bubble coming through the tubing. All right, so with that bubble, you're full. Okay, okay at yeah. this point, a couple of things you could do. You could just try to go ahead and push up, but I don't think that's gonna get rid of the bubble. So let's get rid of the air. <clears throat> Two ways we can do that. Turn your stopcocks all the way open. So open to the end port, I should have okay. said. Flip your syringe, air rises, and have it completely straight up and down good. And just get to where all the air, so you want a little bit of fluid, you want it good. Get a little bit more, because there's some bubbles. Tap it. Okay, good. Now, turn it back the other way and open back up. Start drawing down. Get your, and see those bubbles coming? Whack, whack, whack. A little bit harder. Make sure those bubbles come up. Okay, good. Now we can go forward. Let's put that flush back into our bag. Good, and just stop about right there. We don't wanna inject that air. Actually, you can go a little bit more. Okay, and then turn that stopcock back off to the tubing, perfect. Now we have, we have pulled down our flush. We've cleared any air. That tubing is prepped. We're gonna do the same with the contrast line. some pressure on that, keep going. You also do wanna, do you wanna visualize your line all the way up? Make sure there's no air. Keep, I keep going, make sure it's looking good, no air. Is that good? Looks good to me, does it mm -hmm. look good to you? Yes. No air bubbles there, no air bubbles in any of the line. Mm -hmm. I wanna go ahead and, contrast is expensive. Oh. So let's push that contrast back up. You're just gonna stop right before you get to the air bubble. Keep going just a little, mm -hmm, good, a little bit. So we can waste that much. Mm -hmm. so go ahead and turn your stopcock back off. And now you can take that syringe off and just put that in your waist. Now you wanna get your control syringe. So now you've cleared, you've prepped your transducer, you've flushed it, you've passed it off, you've prepped your flush line, you've prepped your contrast line. So now we're gonna get ready for how we're gonna be using it. So you can go ahead and connect. Now that is a swivel syringe. So you have to grab a hold of that part. No, this hand, yes. And, and screw it on, yes. You have to screw it on from the swivelly part. Okay. Cause if not, see, this allows that syringe to swivel around. You do wanna make sure it's nice and tight, but not stripped mm -hmm. on there, but nice and tight. So you still had it a little bit loose, so just go ahead and make it nice and tight. All right, then we want to pull down from our flush. Okay, so we wanna go ahead and get some flush, yeah. Draw up flush. Hit it here. And there's some other techniques that I'll show you, like a fluid to fluid a little bit later, but right now I just want you to get the concept. Uh -huh. um, go ahead and get a little bit more because we need to get that air bubble out. That looks good, all right? So let's now turn off the flush. Let's turn it completely straight up and down like we did before when we had the 30s, good. Get, tap it here, good, that's good. Flush all the way through. There's no air and set it down. And so that is prepped and ready to go for the procedure. Now, if we're gonna use an extension tubing, so look over there and see, I don't know if I have an extension tubing. So some doctors are actually, once we put it in the patient, um, they're gonna connect straight like that to the catheter. Some are going to use an extension tubing. And so if that doctor wants an extension tubing, you want to connect it and have flush all the way in it, all the way. <laughs> so it's not that bad. Yeah. I mean, it's just getting, again, like I said, that's why I want you to start, make sure you got the concept of how to turn those stopcocks to do what you need to do.
Okay, so you're gonna, to continue the prep, if we're going to use the extension tubing, you're gonna flush. connect. You're gonna, you're just gonna flush it once you connected it. Okay. So you don't have to do a separate flush like what we did over there, that's just wasting a step. So you're gonna go ahead and connect. And this is a swivel here also. So make mm -hmm, hold tight on the swivel part and then just make sure that you've got it good and tight. And then you can take, and, and you can actually like gravity, so you could turn, this is what I was talking about, like a pressure bag or whatever, you can, your flush, you could open, and then gravity will just let it come out and turn it off. Or you could have a little bit more flush in your syringe and you could have flushed through. But you do wanna make sure that you don't have any air in this tubing, because once we get the catheters in, like we did before, hold on a second, Give me that catheter. And so it's in the patient's body. Then I would be the doctor, so you hold this. And so blood would be coming back because the heart's squeezing, and so it's gonna be pushing blood backwards. You would be connecting, so you would grab here. You would flush a little bit of flush, and it would be a fluid to fluid connection. Go ahead and connect. Tighten, pretty good. And then, anytime there's a connection point, what do you think could be there? Bubble. Air. Air bubble, exactly. So we never would wanna start flushing. We always have to do what we call aspirate, but you're gonna suck a lot of air if we oh, do, because we're not no. in fluid in this situation but I will have a fluid we'll have our fluid model um, and we'll practice some of that as well you would draw back see good blood return make sure if there was any air that it got here to the hub and then you would flush forward you would get some more flush and flush again and then turn to pressure I actually call it a f f p so we aspirate flush flush turn to pressure and that's how we connect when we're getting ready to start the procedure. Then we can read, we'll see a waveform. We would only see one. If we were with a coronary catheter, we would see the aortic waveform, which is the shorter one. This longer one is the left ventricular waveform, which we're gonna be learning the waveforms next week. I'm pretty sure we'll get to the waveforms. We got two classes next week. So I'm gonna try to do Monday and then uh, recorded for Tuesday so that we can be here in lab. But that's how you're gonna get that ready. Wow. <laughs> and we have to do this for the test?